What's up, my people? It's your host, Al Ray. And on this week of the Al Ray Show, I have special guest, Kevin Templeton. He comes from Tampa, Florida. I met Kevin at Weber International during our time there as student athletes. We will talk about his time as a collegiate coach, his time as a father, maybe even the NBA playoffs. But most importantly, we will talk about his new business, Bay to Bay Elite. Stay tuned. The man is here, Kevin Templeton. How you doing, Kevin? I'm good, man. How you doing, Al? I'm great, as usual, as every episode, every day. I enjoy every day. I'm glad to be here. Um, how has the this time been for you during the quarantine? Oh, it's been good, man. I mean, it really hasn't affected me too, too bad. I mean, my work's been able to compensate with me, allowing me to work from home. Uh, you know, I kind of realized that I live in quarantine and I've been in living in quarantine because, you know, I, you know, at the time I work and I come home, mm-hmm. I cook at home, I work out at home, I just stay home for the night. I'm past that partying stage, so I don't really go out like that. So, um, you know, everything's everything's been chill, man. Can't complain. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, like you said, you, you basically go to go to work or before the quarantine even happened, you're going to work, coming home, you know, hanging with your with your family. Um, you have recently introduced us to your new business, your new company. Um, it's mm-hmm. called Bay to Bay Elite. Um, mm-hmm. Let the people know exactly what they can get from what they can expect from Bay to Bay. Yeah, so what Beta Bay Elite is, it's a it's a general uh, training platform. So whether you're looking for sports specific training, whether you're looking to just get in shape, uh, whatever you're looking to do sports wise, fitness wise, we kind of cover it all. We travel around for appointments, and the reason I say we is because it's not just me that does it. I have uh, my girlfriend; she films and helps with the editing of stuff like that. Uh, so it's kind of like our thing at this point. She doesn't like me saying that. She wants me to be like, no, it's yours. It's yours. But, you know, I, she's a part of it, in my opinion. And, um, you know, so it's our thing to me. Uh, but if you're looking for training, anything like that, you know, it's just a general platform. Uh, we cover all aspects. And, um, you know, we're just here to help people out, here to, here to make people better, whether it's sports or whatever. You know, I generally have a background in basketball. But if you're looking for some football training, like I'll go do some homework and put some drills together and, and have some stuff for you. So, uh, so yeah, so it's just a general platform, man. And it's something I've been doing for years now, but I just introduced like an actual training page. So I had one before, but some issues happened with it. And uh, I started my new one and I'm, I've got it launched and I'm trying to get it kicked off and going. So where, uh, where are you located with that? Are you willing to, to travel? Yeah, I definitely am. So I live in Tampa currently, uh, but I have clients all over. I've had people in Miami hit me up. Wow. I've been to Port St. Lucie, Fort Pierce. I train people in Brandon, you know, kind of kind of stretching all over. Not really north at this point. I'm willing to go north, but I just haven't had anybody reach out in that aspect. So we're still growing. But uh, yeah, I mean, basically the state of Florida, I do do Zoom workouts and stuff like that. So, you know, anybody to look to get any type of training like I'm I'm here so and something I see a lot now is like a lot of former athletes are doing the training now what can Mm -hmm. you say is like what what makes your business special what makes you stand out from the rest of the pack uh I've been there I've been through so many different systems honestly it's sad to say that I've been through so many different schools and trainers and stuff like that but it just gave me a wide variety of knowledge So I've learned from so many different people, Uh, you know, being in college at first, like my first year at Millsaps College, I had to play the post a little bit. So I learned about the post game, Um, you know, footwork, everything like that. So just being around a lot of different systems, a lot of different strength and conditioning coaches, a lot of different, uh, I guess you could say like coaching strategies, coaching philosophies, everything kind of molded me into what I am. And I just kind of pieced it all together and, Um, I'm very client specific. I don't create workouts that are just like a general basis type workout, do workouts specifically pertain to the client. Uh, I do my homework. I study. I make sure I have a workout plan when I go in for you. I just don't go in and just throw something together freestyle last minute. I make sure I have a routine and plan ready for you. And, you know, I offer 24 hour support. 
So I'm always here for you. I'm always ready to make you better. I'm always to help you in any way I can. If you need help with an exercise, I always will put a little video together for you or show you a link um, that will show you how to do the exercise. So, you know, just, just, uh, just being around so many different platforms really helped mold me into what I am and what I've learned and who I'm trying to become. Awesome. Awesome. So um, you did mention coaching. Mm -hmm. um, not only are you a trainer, but you have coached in the past. Um, you're not with a, a school right now, are you? I'm not. I'm not. So in the past, um, you've coached at the, the highest level, well, almost the highest level, at the collegiate level. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you've coached on both sides, men's and women's. What is the, the biggest difference in the, in the two on the, from the men's and the women's side? Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, I like coaching women better uh, mm -hmm. just for the simple fact that they're very fundamental. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, women, there's, there's not too many girls that are playing above the rim. So they got to focus on the fundamentals and, and, and getting the, the easy things down pat, you know, the simple things, really being strategic in what they're doing. Man, you could get away with just being a high flyer, okay? You can, you can look crazy handling the ball, but if you could jump last minute and dunk it, it looks mm -hmm. good. Uh, so that's a big difference to me is the fundamental aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's my uh... – I've never coached girls. I've only I've only coached boys, but or men. Um, but I'll say, like, even my dad has always told me, like, you need to watch the you need to watch the girls because they're very fundamental. And like, majority yeah. of us, majority of people who play basketball are not super athletic. Like, we're like decent athletes. We may even be like a rim grazer, but a lot mm -hmm. of us are not playing above the rim. So um, the the women's side, the girls side, is very comparable for the majority of society, where it's a lot of you know fundamental passing knowing how to shoot with the proper form, um, screens, knowing how to run plays, different stuff like that. So, uh, and I've been told that as well. You're not the first person I heard that from. It's like the girls is, it's a, it's a little easier. Um, I've heard that girls don't have as much ego as the, as the guys. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, when you, when you try to yell at a guy, like, or to try to correct him, like his manhood steps in and he feels <laughs> like he's got to show that he's boss at the time, you know, like girls, girls aren't worried about that. They might get a little upset because you're yelling at them, but it, it's, it's really about just listening to what the coach is saying, not the way they're saying it. Listen to the message that they're giving you mm -hmm. um, no matter what the tone may be. So, yeah. And you know, it's crazy because like, my grandpa used to tell me that. My grandpa used to tell me, oh, you need to watch the girls, the fundamentals. You know, you got to understand how to do that stuff. And I used to blow it off. And now I see myself telling people it is crazy. So, so shout out to WNBA and the yeah. collegiate women as well. Um, a lot of mm -hmm. really great, great skilled ballers out there. Um, so I said you coach on both sides. Where did, you get, where did you get your your start in collegiate coaching? I got my start at Weber. So it was something um, – I did my first year of college at Millsaps College as a player. Uh, some things just didn't work out there, so I ended up transferring over to Weber International University where we met. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, good experience there. My playing career was cut short because of injuries, uh, something that I kind of left under the table. People knew I was injured, but they didn't know the severity of it. Um, I tore every tendon and ligament in my ankle. Jeez. And uh, kind of after that, like, it was just never the same. Like, with rehab and everything, it was never the same. I never felt the same. I would catch myself just, like, walking up the steps and tweaking my ankle. Uh -huh. And I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy that at all. And it was something I talked to, uh, who was a coach at the time, John Schaffner. And I told him, like, look, I still want to be a part of the program. Uh, I want to I keep my scholarship. You know, what can I do? How can I help out? And uh, I thank that man because he, he really – he is the one that got me started with it. So I started coaching with the JV team. Uh, I was an assistant on the JV team, and then eventually I was able to be the head coach of the JV team. So I worked there. I helped with player development uh, for the entire program. And uh, really, it really kicked off there. So it was a good experience. Uh, my first year being the head JV coach, we were the uh, Sun Conference runner-ups. And the next year, we won the Sun Conference. I wish I would have had back-to-back -back because that first year, we lost at the buzzer, the Northwood, which is now Kaiser. But we lost to Northwood at the buzzer. So it was tough, but, I mean, it was very enjoyable. And we, I mean, we ended up coming back and getting it the next year. So that's all that matters. And those were some of the, the best years. I didn't get to play, obviously, for people who are watching that. We were 
KT and myself were there at the same time, so I didn't play for him. Um, mm -hmm. But just those years at Weber were some really great times. Um, and as he said, um, you know, he didn't get to win that. The, he, he wish he would have got the back-to-back, -back, but maybe – if you won that first one, you may have not won the second one. Like, there's probably some lessons yeah. going through that process. Um, mm -hmm. So, Schaffner, he gave you that that first try. Um, eventually, I know you ended up at HCC, which is Hillsborough Community College. How did you get to HCC? Uh, so, at the time, I wasn't coaching at Weber. I was just uh, I just had a regular full time job. And Chris Springs, who used to be the assistant women's coach at Weber got the head coaching job for the women's team at Hillsborough Community College. And uh, we were all at a, I guess you could say like a little family get together, like with a mutual family. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started talking and he told me about it. And I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, I'll check it out. So like I went to a couple of like the summer open gyms and he kind of like showed me around and talked to me about it. And I ended up doing it. I really ended up enjoying it. It, it was good. It was, it was my career passion. Like that's what I wanted to do with myself. I wanted to be a college coach. And uh, I did two years there as well. The first year, I was the assistant women's coach, and he promoted me after the first year to associate head coach. So, you know, handled everything there, whether it was scouting reports, budget, uh, booking trips, individual workouts, practice plans. Uh, you know, he, he had a lot of faith in me because uh, he would let me handle the workouts as far as the weight room by myself uh, while he was upstairs in the office taking care of stuff. Every practice, every morning, the first 30 minutes were KT workouts. He dedicated the first 30 minutes to me. Whatever I wanted to work on, he would let me work on it with them. And a lot of times, like, I would take our offense and I would make drills out of our offensive plays so they could see the different options and, and maybe, like, passes, like skip passes that they didn't know that was there that would be wide open because of the help defense sagging in so much. So it was good. That's something I do, too, um, with – with, with the team I coach, um, mm -hmm. I try to break down the offense to the individual parts and try to just keep repping those out. So it's kind of second nature once they get into the game and, and they, you know, they just do it right away. Um, so he gave you that leeway. Um, do you see your, yourself getting back into college coaching? Because you said it's, it's a passion of yours. Um, you had the opportunity to coach on both sides, so you know what to expect. Um, do you see yourself getting back into it and is it on either side or is it could it be at a different level like say high school or anything uh if the right situation was to come about i would consider it uh right now i really enjoy the training side of things uh you know i i do talk to coaches from time to time and try to feel it out if it is something i would like to do it would just have to be the right fit you know that i'm very big on family i'm very family oriented and you know, honestly, I love having my weekends, you know, as a college coach, you know, you there, there's no off season as a college coach, like even during the summer when the players are off or at home, you're on the road uh, recruiting for two years from now, you're recruiting the class of 2023, you know, and, and it's, it's just a constant grind and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, it's, like I said, it's just got to be the right situation. I really love it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was something that even when I, was done coaching at HCC I was looking for other opportunities it's just nothing really came about to say mm -hmm. um I like high school the thing with the high schools around here is you need to be a teacher mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be honest with you man I don't think I could be a teacher man like especially with how these kids act these days I don't think I could be a teacher man like the, these kids get attitudes and everything like that I just don't have time for that man like there there's there's, there's a lot of high school jobs that do offer stipend positions, mm -hmm. uh, but it's few to none around here where I'm at right now. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a possibility. I'm not knocking any level. No matter what level it is, it's basketball, and I love it. So, you know, if the right situation comes about, yeah, but if not, I'm, I'm willing to ride the wave with this training and see what happens with it. That's, that's dope, man. Um, so – you want to continue to ride that wave with, with training um, and you'll give that, that opportunity to not if, if the right opportunity comes for you in coaching. Mm -hmm. um, you have a son. He, he's seven years old. Um, do you think you would be more apt to lean towards, hey, I might want to 
coach my son? Like once he gets of that age, or do you want to kind of let him do his own thing and you stick to, to training at that point? No, nah, I mean, he could train with me, but he's got to do his own thing. I don't, I don't want to coach my son. Uh, I'm not pushing him towards basketball either. If he wants to play basketball, great. If he wants to do football, if he wants to run track, if he wants to play golf, great. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, so I'm not pushing him towards that. I don't want to be his coach, though. I, I've, I just I don't want to be put in that position, the, uh, that position, plain and simple. Like, I, I just feel like, you know, I, I've played for coaches that had their son on the team, and I know some of the things that were said or the, the fact of favoritism and stuff like that. Like, man, just get, go, go be your own man. Figure it out on your own. I'm always here for you for guidance. If you want help training or whatever, I got you. But I don't want to coach my son. No, he, he needs to figure the ropes out himself. <laughs> I've seen some coaches not – I won't say lose their job, but they've had to step away from coaching because, you know, it's calling, causing a rift at, at the house. But why yeah. I say, well, how come – you know, why is our boy not playing as much or why, why is this person playing more or – other parents saying like why is he why is his son playing so much like you said favoritism that top of mm -hmm. it um so i can imagine that can be very stressful and and i commend you for trying to avoid <laughs> wanting to avoid all that um yeah, man it's just a headache all together so you mentioned your son you've been a father for seven years um i'm not a father yet i plan to be eventually one day what is the the best part of being a, a dad Watching them grow, like they grow so quickly, man. That's one thing is like you blink and all of a sudden they're 18. So it, I look back at the last seven years and like some of the years I'm like, man, like where did the time go? You know, it's just it's just seeing them grow, seeing them mature, uh, sharing the laughs with them. I mean, me and my son have laughs where we're literally like on the floor rolling and dying of laughter, like because it's just whatever is going on is so funny and we can't even stand up at the time. Like we feel so weak. So it's good. It's, especially when you have a son. So I don't know about the daughter aspect, but I know having a son and like being able to go outside and play sports with him or just going to ride bikes, ride scooters, whatever it may be, or, you know, just, just kicking back with them, man. It's like, I, I can't name one bad thing that comes with being a dad. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Um, I want to commend you again for, for being a father. Um, not just a, or I won't even say a father, but a dad. Because any mm -hmm. your father, anybody can lay down and have a kid, but actually being there for him, um, mm -hmm. whatever capacity it is. And I've, I've seen that from you since we left school. Um, you being like 100% all the way in with, with being a dad. So um, much respect to you. Um, keep you doing, doing, my friend. Um, so, you know, we have NBA playoffs. Um, mm -hmm. As we spoke before, I haven't, I haven't watched any of the East. Really, it's been like boring up until this this recent round with the Bucks and um, the Heat. Um, I've really paid attention to the West. Like you had Denver versus Jazz not too long ago. That was a great series with um, what's his name, Jamal Murray and um, Donovan. Mm -hmm. So having them, um, and as you told me, you don't pay a lot of attention to, you know, the rounds before the finals. Who do you have in the NBA finals for this year? For the East, I got Boston. And uh, for the West, I got the Lakers. As much as I don't want to say the Lakers, I got the Lakers. So they got too much firepower. You know, you can never count LeBron out. I'm not a LeBron fan, but I got a lot of respect for him and his game. Uh, you can never count him out and, you know, being able to have the other weapons on the team, you know, the Danny Green, the Anthony Davis, the Kuzma, the, you know, it's Rondo, like it's just, it's firepower. So, and then uh, the East, I like Boston. I can't think of their coach's name at the time, but he used to coach at Butler. Brad Stevens. There you go, Brad Stevens. And I always loved his style of coaching. And a lot of people were questioning like how he was going to do with his transition to the pros. And I think he's handled it perfectly. Yep. And he's got that team in sync. They're 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 running like a great style of offense that complements everybody. They're very disciplined with how they run things, and uh, you know they got a lot of respect for him as a coach. The players do. So, you know, I, I I see Boston is pretty tough right now. I don't agree with what they did last play of last game, deciding to go zone. Yeah. Uh, but you know they'll they'll make the corrections and 
that's who I see being in the finals. Okay. Boston and LA Lakers, for people who don't know. Lakers. Lakers, not Clippers. Um, touching, yeah. First of all, I want to touch on Stevens. Um, I think he, and I'm pretty sure you agree with it, he's one of the top, I'll probably say top three, three to five coaches in the NBA. Um, for sure. People who will say, well, he hasn't won a championship yet or he hasn't gotten anything done. Um, but again, I know you can agree on this and any coach out there is watching this is, you know, what, what's showing up there on the floor is not always a direct representation of the coach. Like some of the stuff is, but the coach can't go out there and perform. The coach may not be dealing with anxiety or depression or whatever going through that, that player's head where he doesn't perform mm -hmm. like, uh, What's his name? Paul George. During the, mm -hmm. the last series against Dallas, he said he was dealing with depression and he had a bad three game stretch. Like, what is Doc Rivers going to do with that? So, um, yeah, I'll say, uh, what's his name? I already, I'm the one told you about it. Brad Stevens. Um, yeah. <laughs> Brad Stevens he, he's one of the top coaches, in my opinion, in the NBA. Um, and then on to the LA, LA team, LA Lakers. I'm a huge LeBron fan, so I'm right with him. Um, through thick and thin. But what I did want to ask you is the majority of people, or there's a lot of people I'll say, that think it's going to be the Clippers. They say the Clippers are super deep. They're stacked. They have two of the best two-way players on their team. Um, why didn't you choose the Clippers? Why did you choose the Lakers over the Clippers? Uh, it's just, I, I mean, it's LeBron, man. Like, you think about LeBron, anybody that's on his team, no matter what team he goes to, he makes the team good, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I mean, the Heat was different because they had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh and stuff like that. But you think about him carrying the team on his back in Cleveland, and you think about the regular season that they had with the Lakers and, like, how much they progressed so quickly. Like, it's LeBron. Like, you can't count LeBron out. As much as I don't like to, like to say that, you can't count LeBron out, man. <laughs> never, never. You can never do it. Um, I think – I, I want to know your answer. I still think he's the best player in the league, and it's not, you know, just strictly on talent or skill. Like, he has the talent and the skill, but, like, mentally he has it, leadership-wise. Like, every, he has, like, a total package. And like mm -hmm. you said, you can't count him out. Like, he always has a, a fighting chance. Do you think – do you agree with that, that point? I think he's the best – best player in the league right now mm -hmm. he's the best player in the league right now I'll give him that for sure so uh, I like Kawhi Leonard too mm -hmm. you know we go back to the fundamental aspect of things Kawhi Leonard he's not that flashy player he just gets the job done and his mid-range is unstoppable in my opinion but yeah I think I think LeBron's got the throne right now yeah yeah so we're, we're on the same page man I, I don't understand like I I know what people mean when they say oh they think Giannis or something, he's pretty dominant. Or they say KD or they say Kawhi. But, like, those guys are super skilled. But I just – there's something they're missing. But I think, yeah, you know, LeBron retires. And once he starts to decline, um, I expect to see, like, a Kawhi step up and take over the league or, like, a, a Giannis or um, even James Harden or somebody like that. Um, so, before we get out of here um, – I want you to plug your, your Beta Bay Elite on a plug if you have like a YouTube or if you have um, Instagram, or any type of social media accounts so people can go out there, find you, and get you for your services. Yeah, so basically right now we just have an Instagram, so we try to post at least one video a week. Uh, it's Bay to Bay Elite, so B-A-Y, the number two, Bay again, and then Elite. So that's, that's the only platform that we have right now. That's the only one I'm familiar with. I've been having some people talk to me about maybe making a Facebook for it or a TikTok or whatever the case may be. But right now we're just on Instagram. Uh, DMs go straight to the phone. So we're constantly checking them. We're constantly here for you. Just hit us up. Whatever your needs are, if you just have questions about it, let us know. We'll give you all the information you need. There you have it, folks. Bay to Bay Elite out of Tampa, Florida with my friend. I call him KT, but his name is Kevin Templeton. So. KT, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it as well, man. Thanks for having me. You're, you're welcome, man. Anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I'll see you. I'm just trying to set the record straight. If this a fight, then I'm a heavyweight. Super light, I'm in the darkest place. Suit inside me in a coffin cane. Criticize me. If